Hey, what's going on guys? Another knife review, and right now we're looking at the Cold Steel Spartan. Yes, very interesting, very large knife, as you can see here. Uh, really cool. I mean, uh, a lot of the Cold Steel stuff, the, the much larger folders, there's certainly a novelty uh, behind them, but they are usable knives. You know, as, as goofy and huge and comical as they look, they are very much usable knives. Um, but right off the bat, I gotta say that this one definitely uh, fits in the the category of I want that knife because it's friggin' awesome. Because it is friggin' awesome, but it's of course not practical. Um, not at least for something to carry and use every day. Now, that being said, people still do carry and use this every single day, as well as much larger knives, uh, including myself. Um, so, as ridiculous as it is for most people, if you're really a knife person, and you're like me, you like the variety of stuff, and I'll carry anything from, you know, a half-inch bladed knife to, to this and bigger. So, to change things up a little bit, uh, it's cool. Um, but it's very large, and it's very heavy. It's very capable because of that. It has an extremely strong triad lock. Um, I've talked to this before. The triad lock is, is definitely one of the strongest um, locking styles of, of folding knives, you know, to date. It is an amazing design. It's a very simple design, but um, it excels in, in giving the knife the, the strength and durability you need, especially with something this large. Who knows what you're doing with this thing? But, uh, you know, it's certainly cool, but it is a usable piece. It's not just the, the fantasy knife you get, you know, from uh, Bud K or, you know, a variety of, of places for $15.99, you know. Uh, now, as far as price, these sell for about 60 bucks. I'll put a link down uh, to Amazon, but of course, you can also uh, check out other places. Amazon seems to be the cheapest right now, as it is with most things. That's why I'm gonna post a link there. But if you wanna spend a couple extra bucks, I do encourage you to do so, and uh, you know, go to a lot of the um, uh, knife shops that are uh, online. Um, there's a, a slew of them. And I'll maybe make a video in the future talking about them and, and pointing them out for people who aren't aware of them. Uh, but there's a bunch of really, really awesome people that, uh, you know, you pay an extra 10, 15 bucks for a knife, it's going a really, really good company and uh, keeping the small knife business alive. But if you're uh, extremely poor or very, very broke and you still want this knife, Amazon is cheaper. But anyway, so the, the decision is yours. But um, yeah, as far as this knife goes, I mean, I love it. I think it's really cool. It's extremely ergonomic. You can see how the, the butt of the, the handle has an extreme curvature in. All right, so you have a finger troll here, and of course the pinky, and a little bit of a palm swell. It just fits the hand very, very nicely. Extremely comfortable with a full, strong grip on this. All right, the whole style of this knife was supposed to mimic the, uh, the Copus swords that the, uh, the Spartans carried. It's basically a folder version of that amazing sword. It has some kukri, you know, capability in the blade, or some influence, I should say, not capability. But having the, the forward tilted blade, lots of belly in here. Okay, a nice recurve on this one, uh, heavy recurve. Um, hollow ground blade, it's got some, some beef, some bulk, it's thick, it's four millimeters thick, four and a half inches long. Uh, you know, it's mimicking that, that um, Copus sword. Okay, so just really interesting in that respect that the the focus here really is on the handle. This is a very, you know, specific design. And again, it would just keep, you know, the, the sword in your hand, in this case, the knife in your hand, all right? It's not gonna be pulled away from you. It's not going to let your hand right up because of the, this extreme deep finger choil and the, uh, the large guard, all right? But it mimics it, so even the reverse grip, it's the same thing. You can stab, you can pull. It's not gonna come out of your hand. This is probably one of the most secure handle designs out there. It is limiting. If you have very, very large hands, this knife is not gonna work for you, okay? This knife fits me perfectly, absolutely perfectly, okay? Um, but there are many people out there with larger hands than myself, all right? So if you find yourself having a hard time finding gloves that fit, you're probably not gonna want this knife. It's gonna be uncomfortable for you. However, if you have smaller hands, I don't think it's much of an issue at all, because if your hand chokes up a little bit more on this handle, you're still gonna have the, um, uh, the butt of this to um, to grab, you know, your pinky area and stuff if you were to slip a little bit. So, um, yeah, the only the only disadvantage to this design, I think, with people with massively large hands. All right, I want to take a second to talk about that triad lock again. If you guys are not familiar with this lock, uh, basically it's a lock back, okay? But you have a separate pin that separates the spine of the blade from the lock, okay? This is where you're getting all that extra strength. 
The inherent problem with this, if you guys have never used these before, okay, this is a big point I wanna to stress to a lot of people, is that some people have a hard time um, unlocking this knife because you have to depress that so far to release the blade, okay? There's a lot of spring tension on there, all right? So a lot of people have problems with the triad locks. If you have a weak thumb or a problem with your thumb or a problem with strong lockbacks, this, again, is not gonna be the knife for you. It is very difficult for, for the average person to just quickly depress that lock. It's, there's a lot of strength and pressure that needs to be put on that in order to disengage it, okay? Um, there's no real detent in this one, but the back spring's so strong that it doesn't want to shake out very easily. You could whip this thing out if you really wanted to, okay? Give it a good old whipping, you could pop it out. Uh, I'd say it's much more effective in the reverse grip like this. And I can't really show it, but you can maybe hear it off camera here. Okay, pops right out just with a, a flick of the wrist down. So in the reverse grip, you can pop it out. All right, something else I wanna talk about is this uh, opening mechanism, okay? You can see there's a very large thumb disc, okay? That helps you to get this huge blade out. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to, but you can actually open and close this fairly easily with one hand, all right? Basically, once it's open, again, using a lot of pressure on here, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can depress it and push it down on something like you know your leg or the side of your body and close it that way one-handed. Um, of course, you can let the, the blade drop as long as it's not in the way of your fingers, if you angle it right. But more, more than likely, you're gonna be using two hands for this, okay? The most common way for me to open and close this would be to wave it open out of the pocket because that thumb disc does double as a wave feature. See how it's raised up off the spine, okay? This allows it to grip the material in your pants and as you're pulling it out, it will wave fully open. This is extremely intimidating. Not recommended for uh, for the sheeple when you're out in public and the sheeple are around you. Um, do not wave this thing open because someone will probably be really, really scared and uh, unnecessarily draw attention to yourself. All right, so this is definitely a lot of flash. Um, you can take it out of your pocket without waving it, but you know because it's on there, it makes it a little bit more difficult. So just be aware of that. When you're taking this out in public, it, it could draw quite a bit of attention, not just because of its size, but the fact that it it can wave open and uh, that frightens people who aren't around knives all the time. So anyway, just, just a little note there. Um, the pocket clip is swappable to left-hand side carry if you want to, which is very nice. The, the wave is obviously ambidextrous. You can wave this out of your left or right pocket depending on how you want to carry it. So that's a nice little bonus. The pocket clip on this one actually, I have to say, is probably one of the best of all the um, cold steel clips Usually they're super stiff. This one is kind of stiff, but with the orientation of it on this pocket, you can see the contact between the, the frame of the knife or the handle scale with that clip is very minimal. All right, so there's not a whole lot of friction. So this is literally the best clip, you know, experience I've had from Cold Steel. Cold Steel has always had uh, very stiff clips with very aggressive texturing, which made for a knife that grabbed that pocket material so hard it doesn't want to come out of your pocket, which is uh, difficult and it's definitely a negative. In this case, it's not a negative. This was totally fine in the pocket. I'd love to see um, you know, this experience on, on other cold steel knives. I love cold steel, as I do a lot of different companies, but the one thing I've always said is their clips are just too damn stiff. You know, They have to do something in the design to uh, allow it to come out of your pocket so you can use the thing. You know, Anyone with, the, with cold steels out there know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, Super cool, uh, it is big, 10 and a half inches overall. Um, it's six inches closed. Uh, the, the material here is the grivery. Cold Steel calls grivery, it's just a synthetic. Um, it does have stainless liners, okay? Full stainless liners. This really helps with torque. It also makes the thing a brick in your pocket. 9.2 ounces, all right? So it's massive, it's heavy, it's impractical for everyday carry to open your mail but people are still gonna buy them and use them because they're super cool. But I'm here to tell you that uh, it is a usable blade, okay? The steel on this is the AUS 8A, yeah, it's okay. Um, you know, nothing special, but you know, I do recommend you, you know, keep your, your knives sharp, just as you would keep your guns clean and full of ammo. You have to keep your, your edge nice and sharp so you have a, a capable tool. Um, so if, if you're able to sharpen your own knives, you know, it, it's not an issue at all. Uh, some of the, the knives with, um, you know, lesser quality steel. I shouldn't even say lesser quality so much as it doesn't have a super steel. Price always reflects that. Of course, this can have a better steel in it. It would jack the price up. 
Keeping it at about a $60 price range, I, I think is very adequate, again, to have the AUS 8A. It's fine, yeah, it'll dull up on you. All blades will eventually. Um, but if you're really getting into knives or you've been into knives for a while, you really should be at the point where you should, you should learn how to sharpen yourself. So it's not an issue. I know a lot of people who love knives. They won't buy anything less than like M4 because they don't know how to sharpen their knives. And it's such a shame. They're really limiting themselves. They're not experiencing these cool, fun knives simply because they, they feel like the, the knife steel is crappy. And that is very unfortunate. Um, just learn how to sharpen your blades and, and you can enjoy all kinds of knives, cheap ones, all the way up to expensive ones. But anyway, that's not really anything specific to this knife as much as it is a rant just to people in general. Um, you know, if you like the hobby, you gotta, you gotta learn about it. You know, if you really like cars, eventually you gotta learn how to fix them up a little bit, right? But anyway, the knife you can um, take down, okay? It does use uh, Torx hardware for the pivot, and obviously you see the, uh, the three frame screws here. It is a closed design, okay? There is a uh, backspacer in there. Um, the knife is, it's awesome. It is a really, really awesome knife. It's just not practical. A lot of the big ones aren't, but even though it's not practical, or it's, I should say, it's not uh, ideal to carry in a, a public situation and to be using in public because it does draw unwanted attention to yourself. Uh, same as if you carried a gun, uh, you may carry a, a standard size pistol as opposed to walking around with a Desert Eagle, you know, fully on display for people to be scared of. Uh, although I don't think there should be a, a, a you know a good reason to to dislike someone because they're using a large knife. Unfortunately, in today's society, large knives are frowned upon. Um, so this one for me is uh, you know it's something I'll use around the house. It's definitely something that uh, I've carried and used outdoors before. I don't recommend chopping with these. Neither does cold steel. Just because it's big and because it has this massive blade on it with a really strong lock does not mean you should be chopping with it. At the end of the day, it's still a folding knife. It's extremely strong and extremely capable, but don't push it to its limit because it does have limits and it will eventually break if you abuse it, okay? Um, so, you know, it's cool, but it's definitely a novelty. It's just nice to see that the novelty is still somewhat affordable. For 60 bucks, a lot of people can buy this really cool knife that most people won't even use to cut things. They'll just kind of fondle it, open it, hold it, feel cool about themselves, you know? And there's nothing wrong with that, honestly. It, if you get joy out of knives, it doesn't matter if you're the guy using it day in and day out for work or you're the you know, 12 year old kid who puts it in the display case and shows it off to your friends. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let's look at the centering on here is pretty damn good for being well used. Um, does have a, a lanyard hole on there, in case you're interested in throwing a lanyard, you can certainly do so on this one. You know, it's pretty straightforward. These big knives, I mean, some people write them off as being goofy or ridiculous, you know, but if you're wondering, you know, I want to get one of those things, I don't just want to show it off, I want to use the thing. Is it going to break? No, it's not going to break. You see the Cold Steel videos and stuff, they're proof DVDs. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely entertainment, but there's certainly some, some truth there too. They do have very good, strong, um, you know, capable knives. And this is no different. Just because it's large doesn't mean it's, it's a novelty. Uh, there's novelty to it, but it is a workable knife, all right? So if that was your concern, I don't think it should be a concern. Uh, if you like the design of it and you don't mind the extra weight, then I think you'd be very happy with it. It's a good quality knife, and that's the whole point. For the $60 price tag, I think it's worth every penny if that's what you're into. So there you go. That's my review of the Cold Steel Spartan. So thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate your time, as I always do, and uh, lots more knives to review. Stay tuned in with my Instagram account. It's Cutlery Lover Jeff. Um, I use that all the time for little teasers. I'll, I'll show you guys some knives that I'm you know, in the process of using, so eventually you'll see a review on it, stuff like that. Um, so that's it. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day, and I'll see you soon. Take care.